So my family is originally from South America. My dad is from Lima, Peru, and my mom is from Guayaquil, Ecuador. And they both immigrated to New Jersey when they were young. My dad was six or seven when he decided to move with his family to Newark, New Jersey. And then my mom moved to the US when she was 13. Yeah, I was expected to attend four-year university. It was always ingrained, um, kind of like an unspoken rule in my family. And so I knew that unlike my older sister who didn't go to a four-year university, that it was expected of me to go to a four-year university. So I realized that I wanted to have a different pathway than she did in life and I wanted to be successful. And so I knew in order to achieve my goals, I had to go to college. I decided to attend UC San Diego for multiple reasons. I realized in high school um, and taking IB biology courses that I was really good at science. And I knew that UC San Diego um, really focused on STEM majors. And so for my passion in biology, I decided to um, go there uh, and study. And I know they had Scripps Institute of Oceanography. I was very interested in oceanography as well and marine biology. Also, I did a Hughes Scholars Program, and so I was very connected to UCSD at an early age. I had a lot of friends and mentors go there. I also wanted to stay close to home, but also wanted to be independent in a way, and I felt that going to UC San Diego would be a good medium. Yeah, so when I originally entered UCSD, I uh, entered as a biology major. And I realized at the time that marine science was only a minor, but the academic advisor told me that they were actually going to establish a major. So then that's when I made the decision to switch from general biology to marine biology. Um, I realized that I wasn't doing well in organic chemistry um, in addition to other classes. And so I was subject to disqualification and because of that, I realized that my passions actually lied elsewhere. And I was interning at the uh, Women's Center on campus. And I actually had ac my academic advisor, Joji Reyes, and my supervisor, Cecily Nelson, actually tell me, you know, have you considered uh, majoring in critical gender studies? And at first, I was kind of hesitant because I was like, what am I going to do with that? You know, how am I going to get a job and make money? And so um, and my dad, he's an engineer, so he was really pushing me towards, you know, the STEM majors. But then um, once I made the switch, I realized that all my um, internships and student jobs on campus all had to do with social justice backgrounds and the classroom format and just the assignments were so different than um, taking a science course or chemistry, whereas you had to study and take multiple choice questions and free response versus uh, my critical gender studies classes where it was very much reading literature and critical thinking and writing papers and just learning how to take a stance on um, and, and kind of argue your point. And the classes are a lot smaller and more intimate, which I really appreciated. My All my professors knew my name, and it was a very inclusive class versus a competitive environment um, had I stayed in the sciences. Yeah, so some of the other jobs on campus included being a res life clerk for OASIS, which is the Office of Academic and Student Instructional Services. Uh, I also got to work for their summer bridge program. I got to be a math facilitator for students who went through the summer bridge program and needed assistance in their studies. I was also um, an intern for spaces. I also worked for the Women's Center, as I mentioned earlier, as an intern there. And I was an RA for TRIO, so I got to oversee uh, my own suite of students and help them get exposure to living on college, thinking about what the classes would be like and um, getting to escort them and have lunch with them in the dining halls. Yeah, so some of the campus organizations that I was a part of included Summer Bridge, that was a transitional program from high school to college. And although it's an informal student org, I really felt like it provided me a home away from home as we 
were already exposed to UCSD campus and the lifestyle and the courses and other campus organizations that I were part of were um, in Muir College, we had our own student organizations, including the Muir Residence Council. There was Foosh, the improv comedy show. And I was also part of a Latina-based sorority called Lambda Theta Nu Sorority Incorporated. I was also part of Mecha, which was a student organization focused on Latinx students. A little bit about my sorority. I Honestly, if you had asked me, you know, before college, I never imagined myself going into Greek life. And I had a turning point um, during my first year of college and had a falling out with some friends. And so I decided, you know, I really needed a new group of friends. And so I decided to explore um, La La Lambda Theta New Sorority Incorporated. In doing so, I realized that there was this community and sisterhood um, amongst a group of women who were um, very inspiring. They were, they empowered me, they retained me on campus, they provided me with a study buddy, they cared about my academics, they wanted me to succeed, so they really retained me on campus. They continue to influence my life to this day. I got my first job because of a sorority sister. I um, also have networked with other sorority sisters who continue to mentor me and provide me access to resources that I wouldn't otherwise have if I didn't join the sorority. So one of the biggest challenges I experienced at UC San Diego was um, being subject to disqualification. And in order to be subject to disqualification, um, you did, that means that I didn't meet a certain GPA for three quarters in a row. And during that time, I was um, a science major and I realized that I really wasn't taking care of myself. I was staying up late into the night, studying, trying to do well on my exams and um, just very poor hygiene, not getting enough sleep. And I really wanted to do better. And so I thought, you know, study more would allow me to perform well on my exams, but then that would cause me to get really sick. And then so I was taking these exams um, under the weather. I was just very sick all the time. And no matter how many times I went to the doctors, they thought, you know, I just get over it and they wouldn't give me any medicine to get better. And then, so every time I'd go and take these exams, I'd perform poorly. And because I performed poorly, again, that led me to be subject to disqualification. This was definitely the lowest point of my college career. I felt like such a failure and I lost all confidence to succeed in college. There's a lot of pressure riding on my shoulders because I, I'm still the first one in my family to um, graduate from a four-year university. And so what I did to overcome this challenge is um, I wrote an appeal so that I would have permission to stay on campus. And it was a very difficult time being in limbo because you don't have access to your financial aid. You also don't have, um, you can't enroll in your classes. And so, and then I was at um, a point where I could potentially lose my internship at the Women's Center. And so all of these things, and I was living off campus. So if, if I didn't have financial aid, I wouldn't have housing. So I worked really hard with a sorority sister to write my appeal and in the appeal, um, they specifically asked me, you know, what are the steps that I'm going to take in order to succeed and why should I be allowed to stay on campus after, you know, not meeting the minimum um, GPA qualification. And so I told them, you know, I'm going to be inactive in my sorority. I was working multiple jobs to financially support myself. So I said I would take a step back from working multiple jobs um, because I'm low income. I said I would start going to CAPS and um, work with a counselor to just kind of build my confidence up and talk about everything else that was going on um, in my personal life. And I said that, um, you know, I was really sick and that I was practicing poor hygiene and not and sleep deprivation. So I said I was going to really practice self-care and implement um, a system to ensure ensure my well-being and health. I also um, did mandatory study hours, so just putting together a study plan to ensure that I'll be successful in my new classes. But I think the most important one um, was changing my major. So at that point, I decided, you know, I don't want to pursue science anymore. I'm clearly passionate about social justice, equity, diversity, inclusion, and I really felt that critical gender studies encompassed those values of mine. 
So that's really what allowed me to start over, um, build my confidence back up and being in a different um, school setting and classes in general really set me up for success. I feel like there's a few. So definitely going to Sun God Festival with my sorority sisters. My class of sorority sisters had just crossed into the sorority and officially became members. And so we were able to celebrate together at Sun God Festival. I believe that year um, Kendrick Lamar performed. So it was just really wild and fun. Uh, I think another fond memory is the day we had our step out in my sorority. And so a step out in our sorority is where we get to do kind of like a stomp the yard performance where we come out to the whole Greek community and we get to do stepping, strolling and step stepping with machetes and everybody from all the Southern region chapters from like LA to uh, from like USC, uh, CSU LA, everybody, like all the Greek organizations come together just for that performance, just to see us, meet us and welcome to the Greek community was probably one of the highlights of my college career too. And then I think finally it would definitely be um, my Rasa grad graduation. And that was an opera, it was a very intimate setting. I had my own table. I got to invite my closest friends and family. And that was definitely my proudest moment is getting to walk on stage, honor my parents and then have them put a sash over me. And, you know, cause this is just a huge accomplishment, not only for myself, but for them. So it was just such a proud moment to be able to honor my parents, finally get to the point where I'm graduating and just be able to celebrate with them. So after graduation, I was planning to start the Teach for America program in Miami and teach math. And I actually did not hear about that job offer until after I had accepted um, an RA position for the TRIO summer programs. And so I decided to defer my Teach for America offer for a year. And the transition would have been really fast. They really wanted me to start the day after I walked at commencement. And at that point, I just didn't have the finances to up and leave San Diego to go to Miami, Florida. So I spent the summer being an RA for a trio. And then after that, I took some time off and I decided that, you know, I'm bored. I'm going to start looking for jobs. And my sorority sister was the one who referred me to doing AmeriCorps. And so I decided um, of October 2016, I decided to join the AmeriCorps VIP program and I got to work for Save San Diego, which is a nonprofit organization. I was able to support their volunteer department. And then once my 11 month service term ended, uh, I decided um, due to personal reasons, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, that I was going to defer Teach for America again because I just was not in a position to leave to Miami to um, be a part of their program while my dad was here in San Diego. So I decided to renew my AmeriCorps contract and do a second year. And from there, I worked for Jewish Family Services uh, for another 11 month service term. Um, at one point, I decided I no longer wanted to do Teach for America, that I was really invested in working for nonprofit organizations here in San Diego. And so I went on to apply to grad school and um, pursue a master's in public administration with Penn State. I realized that um, after that uh, second service term with AmeriCorps, I landed a position with the San Diego Women's Foundation. And this is where I was really interested in becoming a fundraiser. I learned that I had a knack for building strong relationships with people who were interested in philanthropy. And so I decided to pursue becoming a fundraiser. So then I decided to no longer continue my master's in public administration, and I decided to switch to receiving a certificate in fundraising development instead. That not only saved me a lot of money, um, but it saved me time, and it really honed in what I was passionate about, which is fundraising and building connections with donors who want to become change makers and make an impact in the community. And so after Reality Changers, I also decided that you know, I'm ready to grow and spread my wings a little bit more and kind of um, reach a mid-level fundraiser position. And so now I'm here, I'm at California Western School of Law and I'm the major gift officer. And so now I get to do a lot of frontline fundraising with people who are passionate about making a difference at the law school.
Some advice I'd give other UCSD students is to have meaningful jobs when you're on campus. I really feel like the internships that I had at all the different community, community centers really spoke to my passion for social justice and change. And it's so amazing to know that getting that experience uh, directly applied to working for nonprofit organizations where you focus on doing service and providing resources to those in need where the government doesn't provide. And so it was really nice to know that those meaningful jobs really played a huge role in my success and professional journey. I would also recommend, you know, exploring things that you would you would, wouldn't normally explore. So if you have a passion or interest and you want to attend an event that is related to it, then go do it. If there's um, if you need help with something, then utilize the resources on campus. You know, they have the Career Services Center, you have the com campus community centers, you have your academic advisors, you have um, gyms. There's just so many things on campus um, that I feel like I didn't utilize until my last year of college that I wish I had utilized sooner. And um, other advice is to use LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is just a, has been a huge proponent in my success in terms of building relationships, networking. Um, I'd also recommend finding a mentor and also um, doing, again, aside if you can't find like a student job on campus, you know, explore internships or volunteer opportunities elsewhere, uh, especially in nonprofits. There's a different mission for every organization. If you love animals, there's a nonprofit for that. If you love women's health, there's a nonprofit for that. If you love higher education like I do, um, there's also a nonprofit for that. So whatever it is that you're interested and passionate about, just go explore your interests and or connect with people who are in the role that you want to be in. And that's kind of where I'm referring back to LinkedIn. I did a lot of LinkedIn stalking uh, in terms of, you know, how did fundraisers get to be fundraisers? And that's how I found out about the certificate program. That's how I found out about doing the fundraising academy. Uh, that's how I joined a professional network. And so, um, or I also noticed that a lot of professionals uh, got their master's in business administration. And so there's just so many ways you can attain the career um, that you want to be in.